New update from court in ongoing case, Airbnb, cameras, and arbitration. Oh my. I am the op my last update was posted by myself. You, atypical commonplace. In our, atypical commonplace with special shout out to you, boring history fan, for teaching me about this. Subreddit and how to use it. Last update here posted March 4th, 2023. Trigger warnings. Privacy violation. Less than. Surveillance. Less than. Human trafficking. Less than. Original post and update here. Skip ahead to red circle red circle red circle for new update. Airbnb allowing host to place cameras in the room where I would be sleeping September 30th, 2022. Hey all. Ironically I am a lawyer myself though I am no longer practicing and my area of expertise was way outside this scope. More on that below. In a nutshell, I booked a last-minute Airbnb in New York City listed it had security cameras. Fine. No problem. I understand having a camera at the outside of the door. Once the host received my booking I got an email asking me to confirm that I was aware that the cameras were inside the apartment where I would be staying. Since this was also a studio apartment, that meant that the camera was inside of the room where I would be sleeping, changing, etc. I immediately asked the host to please call me. There were a number of other weird rules like me having to send him a picture of my ID even though I am outside on Airbnb of course. And while waiting 20 minutes for a callback I read some of the other views for other properties. And realized this was all very very sketchy. Before the host called me back I let them know I wanted to cancel. The host said he would not accept my cancellation. Even though this was less than one or two hours after I had booked. And was based on new information he gave me that was not previously accessible in the stated house. Rules or else were up front in the listing. I said I would contact Airbnb. I spent about an hour on the phone with three different Airbnb people. The last told me that I would be receiving a refund. I verbally confirmed this before I went to a hotel and booked it based upon this statement from Airbnb. They asked me if I could send proof of the camera being inside of the room. I said that I didn't even go over to the place and had no interest in doing so now. But I shared a screenshot of the host's message to me. They said this was adequate for me to move forward and that afternoon I received a written note. Saying that I would be refunded and also reimbursed for a portion of my hotel stay. The next day, I received a message from Airbnb saying that they need the host to approve the cancellation and that they would really look into this on Friday. I was extremely confused because this totally contradicted the information I had been given and relied upon the day before. I called and was told I would receive a call that, soon. After 48 hours I still had not received a call back so I called again. After explaining the situation the person on the phone said that I was right. That this was a violation and that I would receive a refund as well as the reimbursement. I thanked him, confirmed I received the message, and went about my day. That night, I received another message from Airbnb. Please note again that this was not a call just a random message saying that I would not get a refund after all. I once again called this morning, explained the situation, was told they would resolve it and that I was right. And then again, Less than an hour later, got a message contradicting this fact and taking it back again. Obviously, I want my money back and I would like some sort of compensation for the fact that I have now spent over 10 hours on this issue with over a dozen Airbnb customer service people who apparently do not talk to each other nor do they know about or understand Airbnb is expressly stated policy that Cameras 1 should not be in the bedroom and 2 need to be clearly disclosed. Not to mention the fact that I relied upon information they gave me to book another place. But this is actually much bigger than me. 
I used to be an attorney representing human trafficking survivors and I cannot tell you the number of times that unknown surveillance devices were used against them. Now, am I trying to say that just by sleeping in a room with a camera I would be pulled into some sort of underground human trafficking ring? No, but the consequences of surveillance in private areas where we sleep and dress particularly at this point in time in the United States where I live, are simply too high to let this go. I need help figuring out what to do next. Thank you for any advice you can provide. ETA. Thanks all. Through my conversations with Airbnb today it has become clear that they believe there has been no violation even though there is a camera in the bedroom. Because it is pointed at the door. By this point they have had five full days notice of cameras existing in private areas against their policies. And as this post has 30 plus listings it could be extrapolated that there have been over 100 days of this issue occurring this week alone. Many types of cameras can be operated remotely these days. Meaning that if you can send it to have a camera in the bedroom, all someone would have to do was trigger the remote device to turn the camera one inch and have it be pointed on your body. I am sure I do not need to tell Reddit about the nefarious things people do on the internet and when Airbnb states expectation of privacy by clearly outlining rules for cameras. I am entitled to that right of privacy. I was also a lawyer representing survivors of human trafficking and domestic violence. I saw all the worst ways that people can use cameras. Throughout the day it has also come to my attention that this has happened to many other people. I'm going to be contacting a personal injury layer to see if an injunction can be placed against Airbnb requiring them to remove cameras from any bedroom located within any property. We'll keep you posted. Update in case against Airbnb where cameras were in my bedroom. Repost Airbnb update in case folks want to ask me cues and I can answer publicly here. December 13th, 2022. Link to initial post here. As per the mod comment I created another post in case folks have cues happy to answer them. Long story short I booked a room on Airbnb and later found out there was a camera inside the bedroom. It was a studio so everything was the bedroom. Airbnb first said you are right. That is not okay. We will reimburse you and pay for 30% of the hotel I would have to book last minute. Then took it back. Then said I was right again. Then took it back again. And on and on. This was not only concerning to me personally but I believe it was a major safety issue that they were not taking seriously and that their customer service representatives clearly did not understand. I spent over 10 hours on the phone with them. I tried to contact Airbnb customer support and ask for escalation. No response. I then contacted their listed executives a number of times. No response. I then used an online platform claiming to help consumers against big corporations. This company said they would take 20% of whatever I got back. Fine. Whatever. I just want Airbnb to stop allowing cameras in bedrooms. Guess what? Airbnb did not respond. So I continued on and filed an arbitration case as per the terms of service when you use Airbnb. Within two hours of the arbitration court contacting us about the matter. An entire team of lawyers was sent by Airbnb to go against me in my claim. Four lawyers. To be exact. Each of which I am sure is billing multiple hundreds of dollars an hour. I shouldn't be surprised but the waste of resources astounds me. I am sure they are just trying to intimidate me and I am not falling for this BS. This is why all these companies charge so much. Because they refuse to handle basic customer service issues and then pass on these absurd things. Like lawyer fees to us. The consumer. Anyways. Just wanted to update y'all. For everyone's info. It costs $200 to file with arbitration so the fact that I have to have so much time and resources 
To fight for what is right already has me really upset. But such is the way when it comes to David v. Goliath. I'll update as the case continues and thanks to everyone here who initially provided support and guidance. Edited to add. Airbnb scrubbed all the correspondence I had with them and the original host always always always. Screenshot everything the moment you think anything may be fishy. Edited too, to clarify, add more context. I myself am an attorney but I no longer practice and even if I did, my background is in representing survivors of human trafficking. Why is this relevant? Well because the reason this makes me so angry is not just because of me. Want to know one of the many tactics used against my clients? You guessed it. Recordings of them undressing, naked, sleeping, etc. At the worst they also drugged folks and taped them engaging in sex acts. Now, am I actually concerned that this would happen to me? No. It could but no. In part because I had the resources to refuse to stay and use a credit card to book a hotel. Some folks have mentioned in the other thread that I could have called the police but we know that. Calling the police doesn't feel like the safe option for everyone. So by allowing this Airbnb is basically making someone choose between staying in a room with a video camera where they sleep, walk to bathroom, change, etc. or hoping they have extra dollar to get a hotel or feel okay calling the police. So I am fighting this because that is just absolutely unacceptable. Edited 3. Some folks have also asked why they went back on their offered refund. First they said that I had, notice, because the listing said it had security cameras. Never mind you that security cameras in private areas, such as where you sleep, is against Airbnb policies. When I brought that up the customer service representative had the audacity to say, well the host said it, isn't pointed at the bed. W-H-A-A-A-A-A? Slash question mark. In case you are unaware of technological innovations, you can remotely move a camera to point towards anywhere in the room. Yeah no. I'm fighting this. Edit 4. Wow y'all. Thanks so much. I will admit. I was a little freaked out yesterday when I saw the show of force Airbnb tried to throw at me but. You all have buoyed my spirits and given me fortitude for the fight. Thank you. But you also knocked off my AMA with my much beloved WW2 fighter pilot great uncle from my top post. Lol. He passed a few months ago so. In case you want to read a story of a real American hero including an anecdote that continues to. Make me die of laughter you can do so here https www.reddit.com slash r slash yama slash comments slash tcqhhq slash i'm jack hallett a 101 year old ww2 fighter pilot second update posted january 27 2023 first post first update side note I have no idea where to answer folks' questions as this forum doesn't allow comments on updates my last post on legal off-topic was removed because it is not an AMA, so if anyone knows where I can answer people's cues and we can discuss this let me know. Less than 3. Well friends. Looks like we are going to arbitration. Court. Airbnb responded to my complaint basically stating the following. 1. Airbnb has no liability for anything under their terms of service. Quote they used in their response from TOS section 18, W, E provide the Airbnb platform in all content as is, without warranty of any kind and we disclaim all warranties, whether express or implied. Interesting side note they also explicitly stated that their Background checks don't really mean anything which is fascinating to me as they really make a big deal about safety. Reminder their own policies say that cameras in private areas, bedrooms is not permissible. Point two. Even if Airbnb was liable I waived all claims by signing said terms of service. Point three. 
I can't sue Airbnb because my alleged damages were the action of third parties and Airbnb didn't cause any of them. Which, reminder, isn't true because I expressly relied on Airbnb's customer service representative.4. I consented to whatever happened to me happening to me by signing the terms of service.5. I am claiming more than I should get i.e. they are saying I am unjustly enriching myself due to my wanting to be compensated for lost time. Reminder I am a consultant and former lawyer who actually consults on these issues as a profession.6. Latches, which is unreasonable delay reminder I contacted them less than 5 minutes after discovering the issue.7. I failed to mitigate any damages see my first post this is probably the most laughable. So we are going to arbitration court. An arbitrator was assigned today and a court date is upcoming. Now, some of y'all may think it is not good of me to be posting this as Airbnb and their lawyers. Hi, may see it but, if you have read my previous posts, you know that this isn't about me specifically but about the madness of what Airbnb is doing and shedding light to y'all about what may happen if you have a known safety issue against Airbnb's own internal policies. Reminder companies that use arbitration clauses do it specifically so that these issues are kept out of the public eye because they are not public record like typical lawsuits are. So I'm here letting y'all know. Final reminder. Airbnb now has to pay $2,900 in filing fees for the case. There is a $2,500 day rate for the arbitrator and the law firm coming against me has four lawyers working on this. They are paying way more than they would have ever owed me. Which, reminder, they told me they would give me. I ask you why? Why would they do this unless they truly and deeply believe it is okay for there to be cameras in your space despite what their policies say? And or this is the beginning of a new trend for Airbnb to refuse to take any responsibility for anything occurring to you while you use their platform. I'll keep y'all posted as to what happens next. Yes yes. I know arbitration isn't technically court but this whole thing is so infuriating I'm taking my kicks where I can get them. Backslash. Red circle red circle red circle latest update. Update from court. Posted March 4th, 2023. Original text. Super TLDR. There was a camera in the studio apartment I booked on Airbnb. Airbnb agreed that was in violation. Offered me a refund and hotel reimbursement and I moved on. Airbnb later went back on their word and I spent over 10 hours fighting customer service. Airbnb corporate didn't respond to anything I said and I filed an arbitration. Not wanting this to happen to anyone else in addition to me getting my dollar back. As they are ostensibly saying that cameras can be in sleeping areas. Airbnb is sending a team of lawyers to fight me in arbitration court and I had the preliminary hearing last week, March 1st. A few interesting notes from arbitration. We have court hearings and memo dates scheduled over the next few months with the full hearing to take place on April 20th. I could have said I was okay doing the case on the documents, but I said I wanted a full hearing. I have the choice for it to be in person but would need to prove cause for that so it will likely be via Zoom. Airbnb only sent one of the four lawyers to the hearing, which was telephonic. Airbnb requested to file what is known as a dispositive motion, basically saying I have no basis to be making any sort of claim. Good news, legal news. I have a week to amend my case which I will be doing to include something a friend found for me. Called MA Chapter 93A which is a consumer protection law that I can utilize since I am a resident of MA. Apparently we have one of the best states for consumer protection and you can read about how it was used against Airbnb in the past here. If any Redditors know of any other laws you think I should throw at this please please DM me. 
I need help and all my calls to lawyers' requests for help have gone unanswered. 93A allows me to seek triple damages so I will def be doing that. Interesting news. A lot of Redditors have noted that Airbnb will try and keep me quiet and you were right. Towards the end of the hearing their representative said they wanted to make sure we were all on the same page in regards to confidentiality, because I had said I may try and speak to the press. I thought they would have brought up Reddit here as well but it seems so far these missives have not yet been uncovered. The judge asked on what grounds they were requesting this and they seemed to try and argue that it had to be confidential by virtue of there being a case. I said that wasn't my understanding and the judge agreed, asking for a citation to governing rules stating as such. They cited a rule saying that a judge could order that it be kept confidential but the judge interjected and said he had not been asked to make any such order and they would need to file a motion requesting as such. So I guess I will see if they file such a motion which I will, of course, argue. Other facts. Yes. I have tried to get the press interested in this story. One major paper was almost going to write about it, but they couldn't find evidence it was a big enough issue. Please if you have press contacts I am happy to chat. I want Airbnb to stop allowing this. That is really all. I have started to try and find counsel as well since. If they do try and quiet me, I will need more resources to fit that. So far no lux so I am still on my own. Remember how once upon a time Airbnb was an exciting way to travel. Stay places and pay less? Now they seem to coast on the reputation in order to fly under the radar as people operate. Unlicensed hotels. Keep housing prices ridiculous. And commit abuses against customers. Or Airbnb does the abusing. It's not in the cards. But I wouldn't be averse to lawsuits bringing the company down. They stopped being a good and interesting option and become a predator. I actually thought about this post yesterday as I was reviewing another complaint about cameras in an Airbnb. Seems like a bit of movement but nothing substantial. Hope Oop prevails. I am really looking forward to Oop lighting up Airbnb's ass. Op here. Was just talking to a friend about this post. And about Reddit in general. And made the note that without Reddit. I definitely don't think I would have gotten this far. Why? If this were just about me or just about the money, then I doubt I could keep fighting this hard. But the fact that I truly deep down believe it is a concern, and the fact that so many other people here do as well, makes me know that I am in the right on this one, and gives me the fuel to keep fighting. So just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been cheering me on throughout all of this. If we do end up making it happen, it will, quite literally, be because Reddit made it so. Well except for our legal advice who banned me because I mistakenly offered to share a resource in my DMs because I thought I was on our nonprofit. But I think I had bothered them too much already and that's the real reason tears of joy tears of joy tears of joy. I hope this person kicks Airbnb in the nuts. Legally speaking. Considering how often I've seen Reddit posts with very few amendments turned into articles by journalists. I think someone will bite soon. Cheers to ops who provide the read circles on updates. I love you. Moving to Massachusetts and good to know about the consumer protection laws. I hope you're able to beat them. This post has been on my mind ever since I read it originally. It's really disgusting how Airbnb is going about this. Good luck. Stick it to the man, yo. You go oop. Oop is the hero we deserve. This is why I will never use Airbnb. A hotel may be more expensive. But usually you don't have to worry about pervs watching you. 
Good news, legal news. I have a week to amend my case which I will be doing to include something a friend found for me. Called MA Chapter 93A which is a consumer protection law that I can utilize since I am a resident of MA. Quote, I think we can thank Elizabeth Warren for this. I'm in MA and my building was purchased by a couple of Rick Scott types. In looks and greed and they are now turning the heat to levels below the legally required minimums and making new rules to fine us. Like if they see that you have cracked a window open in winter months. Regardless of how warm it may be outside that day, it's a $200 fine. Thankfully our local reps are very much interested to hear all of this and more due to MA. Consumer, tenant protection laws and all the other tenants with whom I have spoken are eager to also speak with our rep. They are actively trying to evict people who have been here for years BC the law only allows them to raise the rent every year by a specified percentage. They wouldn't be throwing spaghetti at the wall and sending four lawyers if they weren't worried. Press on. I'm really looking forward to hear the conclusion. Fuck these corporations and their bully tactics. Also, op. Airbnb is officially illegal in NYC for stays of less than 30 days when the property owner, tenant, is not present. I think the city controller would be very interested in your situation. Hell yeah, fight the power. It needs to be in the press. How many more hidden cameras are out there? Airbnb isn't worth the hassle. I had a friend that worked there in 2020 and she said it was always disorganized and no one was ever on the same page. So that makes sense why all these people have op different responses. If I found a camera in a hotel, I'm sure most reputable hotel chains would do everything they can to make it right i.e. moving to another room, etc. I'll be sticking with hotels. Airbnb is a cancer on society and they're partly to blame for the current housing crisis. Fuck him. I hope Oop takes them to the cleaners. If such a thing is possible. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.